Hello, hello. Today, I'm Cadet Randall, going over maintaining your assigned weapon system, which will probably be the M4, but by the book, it'll also be covering the M16. So I'm going to go through all the details by the book. You can ignore the ignore the ones that are, become unnecessary through practice and experience, but for by the books, these are the specific specific rules you will need to follow. Beginning with clearing your weapon. You need to point your weapon in a safe direction and attempt to place the selector lever on safe. Remove the magazine from the weapon if not already done so and lock the bolt to the rear. When locking the bolt to the rear, if you don't already know this process, I will go over pulling the charging handle to the rear, pressing the bottom of the bolt catch, removing the bolt forward until it engages the bolt catch and returning the charging handle to the forward position. You ensure the receiver and the chamber are free of ammunition and then you will have be able to move on to placing the selected lever on safe. Press the upper portion of the bolt catch to allow this bolt to go forward. Place the selector lever from safe to semi, squeeze the trigger, pull the charging handle fully to the rear and release it allowing the bolt to ride to the forward position. Place the selector lever on safe, and now you're ready to disassemble the weapon. This is a nice blown up view of everything from the beginning assembled without the magazine, and then to the end where all the pieces are disassembled. First thing you'll need to do is remove the handguards only if dirt or corrosion is seen through the vent holes. To do so, you will place the weapon on the buttstock. Press down on the slip ring with both hands and pull the handguards free. Push the takedown pin as far as it will go. Right on the back here, just above the, the selector lever. You'll press that in as far as it will go. Pivot the upper receiver on the, from the lower receiver. Push the receiver pin as, in as far as it will go. Separate the upper and lower receivers, remove carrying handle if applicable. And to do this, you will loosen the screws on the left side of the clamping bar and lift the handle off once that clamping bar has come loose. Pull back the charging handle, remove the bolt carrier and the bolt, remove the charging handle and disassemble the bolt carrier. To do this, remove the firing pin retaining pin. Push in bolt assembly to locked position. Drop firing pin out of the rear, the rear of the bolt carrier. Remove the bolt cam pin by turning in one quarter of a turn and lifting it. Uh, remove the bolt assembly from carrier, and then you will press the rear of the extractor pin to check spring functions. Uh, remove the extractor pin after this by pushing it out with the firing pin. Uh, lift out the extractor and spring, taking care that the spring does not separate from the extractor. Uh, remove buffer and buffer spring from the buttstock. Careful with this one, it has punched me in the face a couple times. Uh, remove the buttstock, that will only be for the M4 series and extend the buttstock assembly to fully open. Separate the buttstock assembly from lower receiver extension. Grasp the lock lever in the area of the retaining nut. Pull downward, slide the buttstock to the rear. Now we can move on to cleaning the weapon. By the way, this here is the upper assembly with the charging handle in. The, the bolt assembly will have to come out before you can fully remove the charging handle. And then this is the disassembly of the, of the bolt carrier and the firing assembly. Right here. With the firing pin, the cam pin, 
the extractor pin, the extractor, extractor spring, you have the actual bolt and the whole bolt carrier. That is an even clearer image. Now, for the actual cleaning of the weapon, these are some great tools that you may want to have. It makes it a lot easier to have them, and if you don't, I'm saying you should have them. You will need to clean the bore. That is a big, a big part of where the bullet travels. And the star chamber, just telling you right now, that's going to be the most checked and most highly inspected part of your weapon. So when you when you do clean your weapon, it doesn't necessarily say focus all your efforts on the star chamber, but I will say focus all your efforts on the star chamber because the rest of it is pretty easy. So long as you can get that star chamber cleaned, there's a good chance that may be the only inspected part of your rifle after a good clean. But in order to clean the bore, you will need to attach roughly three cleaning rod, rod sections together. By the books, it is three. Uh, then you will swab out the bore with a patch moistened with CLP or RBC. You will need just a good cleaner cleaning solution as well as a good lubricant solution. Attach the bore brush. And when using the bore brush, don't reverse direction while, while in the bore. By the books. I'm not going to lie, I've done it before. Don't do it. By the books. Point the muzzle down, hold the upper receiver in one hand while inserting the end of the rod without the brush into the chamber. Let the rod fall straight through the bore. Attach the handle section of the cleaning rod to the, to the end of the rod sticking out of the muzzle. Pull the brush through the bore and out of the muzzle, taking off the handle section. Run the brush back through the bore again by repeating the process. Replace the bore brush with the rod tip. Attach a patch with CLP to the rod tip. Pull the patch through the bore. Connect the chamber brush to the cleaning rod handle. Dip the chamber brush in CLP and insert in the chamber and locking lugs. Push and twist to clean. Use a worn out bore brush to clean outside of the gas, of the gas tube. The gas tubes will discolor from heat, so do not attempt to remove the discoloration. Like I said, focus your efforts on the star chamber. You don't necessarily have to make it a brand new looking weapon. Just get the star chamber clean, because if you can stick a white glove in there and pull off any dirt, there's a good chance whoever's inspecting it will be able to as well. Clean the entire upper receiver by wiping it down. Bolt carrier, for the bolt carrier group, you will clean the carbon and oil from the firing pin. Clean the bolt carrier key with a worn brush and clean the firing pin recess with pipe cleaner. Clean, fire, clean the firing pin hole with pipe cleaner as well and clean behind the bolt rings and lip of extractor. Clean carbon deposits and dirt from the locking lugs. Uh, as a precaution, you should not use wire brush or any other type of abrasive material to clean aluminum surfaces. Uh, damage to the actual equipment can occur. Again, by the books. Lower receiver group. Wipe dirt from the trigger with a patch. Use a patch dampened with CLP to clean pow powder, corrosion, and dirt from outside parts of, lowering, of the lower receiver and extension assembly. Use pipe cleaner to clean bus stock drain hole, clean buffer assembly, spring, and inside with patch dampened with CLP. Wipe dry and clean the, clean the ejector. You don't want to use a live round to perform this process. Shouldn't have to be said by the book because we're dummy proof. Place a few drops of CLP on the ejector. Place the ejector in using a spent round, casing, or dummy round. 
hook casing under the extractor and rock back and forth against ejector. Repeat this process a few times, adding lubricant until the action of the ejector is smooth and strong. Dry off excess CLP when the process is complete. Do not interchange bolts between weapons. By the books, none of the parts are interchangeable. By the books. Inspect the weapon for serviceability. Uh, you need to check the handguards or rails for cracks, broken tabs, and make sure they're properly installed. And make sure they're not loose. Make sure none of the heat shields are loose. Uh, check the front sight post for straightness. Uh, check the barrel for straightness. Uh, check for any cracks, burrs, or make sure nothing's loose. Uh, you want to make sure the charging handle is straight, doesn't have any cracks, bends, or any breaks. Check the rear sight assembly for properly working windage and elevation adjustments, and ensure the short and long, long range sight spring holds the selected sight in place. Uh, check the gas tube for bends or retention to the barrel. Um, inspect the bolt cam pin for cracks or chips. Definitely want to inspect most everything on your weapon. Make sure there's no cracks or chips anywhere. Make sure everything's straight. Easy way to sum it up. The rest of this is going to be, again, still word for word by the book. So you're going to continue along that line with inspecting for missing or broken gas rings, inspect bolt cam pin area for cracking or chipping, inspect locking lugs for cracking or chipping, inspect extractor assembly for missing extractor spring assembly with, with the insert for chipped or broken edges on the lip which engages the cartridge rim, inspect firing pin retain, for retaining ah, ex, inspect firing pin retaining pin to determine if bent or badly worn. Inspect bolt carrier for loose bolt carrier key. Inspect for cracking or chipping in cam pin hole area. Inspect buffer for cracks or damage. Inspect buffers for springs or kinks. Inspect buttstock for broken butt plate or cracks. Inspect for bent or broken selector lever. Inspect rifle grips for cracks or damage. Inspect for broken or bent trigger. Visually inspect the inside parts of the lower receiver for broken or missing parts. Turn in any weapons with any unserviceable parts for maintenance. Now you're ready to lubricate the weapon. And then you will be ready to reassemble your weapon. For the lubrication, you will lightly lubricate the inside of the upper receiver, bore, chamber, front sight, outer surfaces of the barrel, and under the handguards. Again, by the books, you apply a drop or two of lubricant to the front sight, depress and apply two or three drops of CLP to the front sight, depress several times to work the lube into the spring, apply a drop or two of lubricant to both threaded studs, lightly lube the clamping bar and both round nuts, and lightly lube mating surface. Apply one or two drops of lubricant to adjustable rear sight, Ensure that the lubricant is spread evenly in the rear sight by rotating the following parts. The elevation screw shaft, the elevation knob, the windage knob, and the windage screw. Lightly lube the inside and outside lower receiver extension, buffer, and action spring. Lightly lube the inside buttstock assembly. Generously lube the, the buttstock lock release lever and retaining pin. Generously lube the takedown pin, pivot pin, detents, and all other moving parts and their and their pins. Lightly lube the charging handle and the inner and outer surface of the bolt carrier. Place one drop of CLP in the carrier key. Apply a light coat of CLP on the firing pin and firing pin recess in the bolt. Generously lube the outside of the bolt body, bolt rings, and cam pin area. Apply a light coat of CLP on the extractor pin. And now you're finally ready after all those excessively detailed by the book details of lubricating your weapon.
you assemble your weapon back to this. Now, if you remember the steps that you did to take it apart, reverse, reverse. Otherwise, I'm still going to go over them. Buy the books. Install the buttstock assembly. M4 series only. Uh, align the buttstock assembly with the lower receiver extension. Pull downward on the least lock lever. Near the retaining pin, slide the buttstock assembly onto the lower receiver extension. Insert the action spring and buffer. Assemble the bolt carrier. Insert the extractor and spring. Push in the extractor pin. Slide the bolt into the carrier. Repeat. Replace the bolt cam pin, drop in and seat the firing pin, pull the bolt back, replace the retaining pin, engage and then push the charging handle in part of the way, slide the bolt carrier assembly, and push in the charging handle of the bolt and the bolt carrier group together. Join the upper and lower receivers, engage the receiver pivot pin, close the upper and lower receiver groups, push in the takedown pin, replace the handguards, Replace the carrying handle if applicable again. Uh, replace the sling and perform a functions check on the weapon. And that right there is how you maintain your weapon by the books.